Well hello there everybody, welcome to the YouTube video here on the channel. My name is Emily Jane, I'm just going to all of that. Today we're here at Dresden on the Dresden to Shona route by Global Bridge Entertainment. Today we're driving CD service EC179 in the Berliner. We're driving 193293, thank you check, in a Vectron, which is a Vectron. So in the cab of the Vectron, not much to do to set up, we're taking off from another driver. We'll set our reverser to forward and we'll set our uh, speedometer at 60. Now due to um, the route, for some reason I can't pick up passengers at any station. So what we're going to have to do is just emulate the time that we depart normally to get out of here, which is at 10 o'clock. Um, so the cab is now set up for departure, as you can see. Got the winds coming up, because it's a little bit rainy today. You've got an IC2 that's pulled in down there. Now this is the form formation, fortunately, isn't necessarily 100% prototypical. However, it's the correct length and the correct classification of coaches as best I could due to the fact that I had issues. Um, I used to have the correct coaches downloaded, but I lost them. And I'm not sure they were from a legal website anyway. So that's why, or well, not illegal, but you know, I'm not sure that they were, well, let's just say, I'm not sure they had the author's permission to be there. So that's why I've, I've decided not to use those and I've just used the best I can from legitimate sources. The local we're driving is an RSSLO Vectron and we're using Dems passenger coaches. They're available from rw.yahim.cz. Yeah, we're due away 10 seconds ago, so that's good enough for me. Break off. Power on. As we're moving away, I'm going to crack open my drink. So we've got a proceed aspect, so I'm going to press the end key to clear the signal. I'll crack, clear the PZB. And our start speed is 60 kilometers an hour. Our first stop today is Bad Shandown, which is in 39.5 kilometers from here. After that, we um, don't actually stop at Shona, but, but the video will end as we pass it. This is a fast train. It only stops at uh, Dresden and Bad Shandown, and then the stop after that is Diechin, which is over the border in the Czech Republic. Um, so, there's that. Right. <clears throat> so, 60k in the, in, in the box. CIFA does activate quite a lot on this train, I've noticed. So, yeah, we're going to do some crossing over here, but then as soon as we join the, the main route, we then uh, go up to 120 kmh. I've got a um, slightly alcoholic beverage today. It's doesn't actually say a percentage, which is interesting. It only shows units. Um, oh, it's five percent. That is surprisingly alcoholic. Um, which is rum and coke, and the first time I've had it, and it's actually really nice. Yeah, you can see another vector on there, taking trucks somewhere. Um, I'm not sure if that if the, it's actually a proper, like a full truck train, but I know I've seen video of a trailer train coming through. Because basically what they'll do is, which I think is a really ingenious system actually, is they'll load trailers onto a train. Train drives somewhere, unloads the trailers, trucks and picked up from there. You know, it saves so much uh, road time, I guess. We're at 60. Um, so what we can do now is we can go up to that 120 limit I mentioned. So you'll see, now that we've got some speed on, the train will have no problem accelerating. Up to uh, 120. The Vectron's a very powerful locomotive. It's sort of multi-purpose, but it does very well in the freight department. Um, so the, uh, let's, I'm going to get a quick bit of history on the Vectron up for you. Also, um, I don't know if any of you have membership for Wish. I'm not promoting it, I'm just going to mention a funny story in relation to it. Um, they're doing a, a promotion for teeth at the moment, like teeth care, like oral care, which I could probably deal with, but you know. Um, and the e the, uh, the email says t like the email title says teeth inside, and I'm like, that just sounds creepy to me. <laughs> so uh, the Vectron is a locomotive series made by Siemens Mobility, introduced at the 2010 Inertrans Trade Fair. Uh, four prototype versions were introduced: the diesel, multi-system, and for, for both AC and DC electric. Uh, sorry, multi-system, which is AC DC, and both AC and DC electric power versions. The diesel version was phased out in 2018 and replaced by a bi-mode. 
uh, version. Which basically has the ability to go from diesel on non-electrified sections of track to electric on electrified sections. The Vectron series is reconfigurable and modular, so this, for example, could theoretically be turned to a bi-mode. And the Bobo configuration, because they've got four wheels, well, four axles, um, and they can be switched, yeah. Um, the, the design is a successor to the Eurosprinter family, which is the uh, the car train that we passed going in the direction. That was actually actually one of the Eurosprinters, I believe. Uh, but they look exceptionally similar to the uh, to the Trax family, actually. Um, there's a, ba a more basic, affordable version called the Smartron that was introduced in 2018. Quick bit of uh, sort of promo talk. So as mentioned, it's a Bobo configuration. It uses AAR multiple, multiple working. It's built. For, it's a standard four for eight and a half inch gauge, but they also build them for the Iberian gauge at five five. 5 and 21 thirds of an inch and the 4 foot 11 sorry. yeah and the 4 foot 11 and 27 32s that's annoying so the CIFA in this train in most trains you just press it and it resets in this you have to press and hold wheel diameter is 1.25 uh, meters um, with a worn so that, that's quite interesting so worn diameter is 1.17 so basically, you wear what eight um, eight centimeters of, of metal off the wheels before they need to be replaced. So when the S1 so is going the other way. Um, length of each each unit is each local correction is eighteen point nine meters, with a width of three meters. Axle loading is t axle load is 22.5 tons an axle. Uh, with a local weight of 80 to 90 tons, depending on the version. Now, um, some locos, are, such as the one we're driving, are limited to 160 kph, but some are also adapted to run at 200. Basically, these are really reconfigurable, which is quite interesting, that you can actually just take it into a shed. It's not a quick process, but you, you, know, you don't have to go and buy a new train if your requirements change, which I think is actually really cool. Um, yeah. It's the main points. So operations, they run all over Europe. They run Germany, Austria, some run in, can run into France, Switzerland, Italy, um, Hungary, Poland, see Spain as well. So they run everywhere. Romania, Poland, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Netherlands. They run in the Channel Tunnel, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, um, Croatia, Slovenia. Pretty much everywhere, <laughs> which is kind of cool, um, you know. And that's, you know, from a purely technical standpoint, you could theoretically load containers on, on, on you know, load this on a container train in Hamburg, and drive it down to, um, you know, d d down to Rome, or you know, and, and just a massive long journey like that, which is half, you know, most of the way across Europe, uh, which. It's just really awesome, I think. They also, as I say, they run all over the all over. They run in. Shush you. Yeah, CD have got them. So Cheska Drahi, which is obviously what we're running today, they run them. So they run them both for as passenger services and as cargoes. So CD, which is the livery we've got on today, they run it all over Europe. Uh, they run pretty much sort of an arterial run, if you like, from Hamburg via Berlin, so Kiel, Hamburg, Berlin. Dresden, Prague, and that some of those services, including not the correction, not this one, some of the services, then extend as far south as uh, Bratislava. But then they also run up into Poland on different services, so they they go all over Europe for CD. Um, for CD cargo, they go into Germany and I believe Austria. So it's it's pretty, uh, yeah. And apparently, even the ACS 64s, which are running on, on the uh, Northeast Corridor in the US, remember that route? Um, apparently, even they take some sort of input from these, so it's pretty cool. So, um, we've got about 4K until we're going to have to drop down. So, what will happen is in 4K, we'll be crossing over from the main line, sorry, from this to the other side. 
because I believe I believe we're on the S-Bahn line, we're sort of the dedicated S-Bahn ends, and then we take the main line. But I'm not sure what traffic runs like on this, in or how, how traffic runs on this in the real world, if that makes sense. So that's why we have to, um, you know, I'm just saying we're doing this for whatever reason. But it's according to the game, it's the fastest route, so I, I trust the game on that front. But yeah, the... Uh, See, see what I mean? I cleared a CIFA, it went external, and then it, it caught me out. The good thing about CIFA is I can just leave the throttle fully forward, and then as soon as the brake release, it puts power back on. But yes, um, anything else we should discuss about the, the, the Vectron? Obviously, most of them are released from ELL. Unfortunately, there's an issue with this reskin that you get that little green square around one of the windows. I'm not sure if that's intentional or what's going on there. Yes, I think we're going to probably take a an amber coming up soon because of that crossover. Nope, we've got a green still, so I must be a little ahead of myself. No, it's that next one. So I think we, we, we might be, be stopped to allow a train to pass. So you dropped down to 85. I'll drop us down to that. There you go, brake released. What I'll do is set cruise control to 85. No, we've got a stop signal, so I'm going to take brake, brake off, power off, brake on, bit of rheostatic brake in. Don't want to be stopped by that signal. We've got full rios. I'm not concerned about stopping for it, but you know. So I'll let the air break off now. So we'll do a quick cab tour whilst we're stopped here. And crawl up to the signal. Alrighty, so we're going to be held here for probably a couple of minutes, so I'll do a quick cab tour. So from right to left, you've got your horn, controlled by the space bar and the B key. There you go. You've got your uh, local brake, you've got your rever your reverse switches, so direct to our direction switches, technically I think they're called. So it's neutral, forward, reverse, the master key or contact key as they call it. Brake overcharge switch. How much overhead line power we're getting. How much power we're using, how much brake power we're using, um, a clock that doesn't work, how much kilowatt hours we've used, how much kilonewtons of power we're using, what loco we're on. Obviously, that we're on a German system, what the headlights are doing outside. Okay, moving on to this MFD, you've got a traction braking indicator, speedometer, you've got your speed, your speed set there. This is an LZB control, but obviously, that's not active at the moment because we're not on LZB signaling. All the PZB stuff appears here. You've got your headlight dimmer controls, you've got your cab light controls. There you go, just showing that off. Brake control, throttle control, uh, sanding, brake release, door controls, fire systems, which we'd never use in the sim. <laughs> um, a Bula screen, you've got your throttle. So this is a throttle brake, in brake indicator. So basically, I push it forward, that's taking power, pull it towards me. Uh, that applies for your static braking. Interesting thing you'll notice uh, between British and European locos, when you push the throttle away from you, it accelerates on European locos. On UK locos, you generally have to pull it towards you, and you push it away from you to brake. But the idea supposedly being, if you go unconscious and you collapse against it, you don't take full power, you go into braking. Although the intervals on the CIFA on this train, I can't imagine that being a big issue. You've then got your AFB or your cruise control, um, main circuit breaker, train heating, pantograph controls, PZB acknowledge, PZB, sorry, PZB acknowledge, PZB release, PZB override, emergency brake plunger. That's pretty much the cab. It's not a massively complicated one. I'm just looking up there, you can see you can do a maximum of 160. Got the wipers on, the wiperinos. You then also got shunting controls over here, which are modeled on the advanced version, aren't modeled on this one. Again, idea being you can stand at the window and poke your head out and drive, basically. 
All right. Um, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll come back when we are free to go. Looks like I've broken the scenario. Some flying couplers coming past. Oh well, we'll get the road momentarily. I'll tell you it's supposed to be an OBB railjet on its way to Dresden. So we've now got the road, so break off. And power forward. So we're on a cautionary signal. With a 50 limit, so what I'll do is I'll actually pull that back to 50. And then we'll put the power in. There you go, we've got green aspect now, so that will mean we can hit piece of B clear. And hammer up to 50. There are also some controls on the rear panel. They're mainly in relation to the parking brake and stuff, but we're not, so we don't talk about that in most counters. Something I will talk about actually in this video, uh, because it's quite a fast one, is I'm actually trying out a new recording technique. So what I've done is uninstalled all the British routes out of trains, and I'm just doing German ones at the moment, or like German, Austrian, that sort of neck of the wood, some Swiss as well. And I'm just going to record as many of those as I can, throw them all on my channel, but don't release them. And then record a lot of British ones on mass as well. And the way you'll see it is one week you'll get a British one, then you get a German one, then you get an American one, or something like that. So, yeah. Just something a bit of a different try, I guess. So what I'll do is passing the 45.2, we're now going to accelerate up to 160, which is 100, well, 110 10 kmh acceleration up to the top speed for the train. There we go. Watch how quickly this thing gets going. Gets up and goes, I tell you. So our next speed point of concern is at 35.4, so about, about 9.6k. We need to start dropping the speed, well, we need to have the speed at 100. So I'll break in about 9k. We go. So yeah, up to 160, 160 the, the miles just, just bleed off. You can see we're now following the Elba River. Uh, this runs all the way um, from here up, to, you know, and it's a pretty big river at this point. It runs all the way out, out and uh, flows out of Hamburg. Or we'll be in a, well we've either just been in a video or we'll soon be in a video. Who knows? <laughs> um, oh dear, this is a bit of a, oh, this, yeah. So I've noticed this route Sometimes you don't get speed posts, but you can tell you, you know, the speed, well, the speed limit just changes on you. So, this is, you know, I do want to try and do at least two videos of routes at one each direction. But on this one, um, I'm feeling like, I think I'm going to do the one, purely on the strength of, it's a pretty old route at this point, and, uh, yeah. 412. So 35.4, as I say, is the, uh. It's the hundred. It's the hundo. But yes, I'm playing this on max settings as well, which is quite impressive really, because I'm running on max settings, but also getting sort of 40, 50 FPS. Which I guess, you know, it's an old route I'm in a valley, even though there's lots of assets hanging about. You know, you can't see that many of them, if that makes sense. Uh, 39.8. Yeah, I've got 4K. <laughs> okay, get it. It's also it's been nice to see PTG come back to root learning videos. 
It's unfortunate because he is um, so very good at it. And he's really outdoing me. And <laughs> it's quite difficult because obviously I want to cover roots, but at the same time, I've I've done root learning videos and have people comment on them saying, "Oh, you're just copying PCG." No, I'm not. I'm doing my own thing with this with the same stuff. You know, um, I've you know I think yeah, yeah. So we've got one point. We've got two K. So we'll give it a minute. I'll even do it from 37 just to make sure we're slowed down because, as I say, this feels a bit strange. Okay, 36.8, 35.4, 1.4 1.2 1.2 that's 1k. So what I'll do is I'll just pull back my cruise control to 100. And what you'll see is the speed will just bleed off using the rheostat brake, or rheostatic, or uh, dynamic brake. I call it rheostatic because that's what sort of the old British Railway term for it is, if that makes sense. And it's just the one I have in my head. We can see we broke, we, we were breaking 1k beforehand, and you know, 800 meters later, we're well below. So Siemens made the Euro Sprinter series now the Vectron series. Um, Bombardier made the tracks, and the, the basically they're on the tracks through three now. The BR one eight seven is what, it, what its sort of formal designation is on the German railways, and that's one on the left there. It's just moving away. A sig, a sig, um, a, a, well, it's a Sigurs, but it's basically a log train. Surprisingly loud log train as well. So the speed picks back up to 160 as soon as we uh, pass the end of the, the, the goods loops. So what I'll do is I'll accelerate passing the end of the station. And then it drops back down to 100, 3k later. So you know we barely get up to 160, but it is what it is. So you got the uh, the Elbe, as I say. That's still the Elbe we're following. We're still in the valley. So it was a lot like the Frankfurt to so the uh, Koblenz to Frankfurt run. In that sense, but it's a lot more trees, and also the route looks a lot older. Thirty-one eight. So what I'll do is I'll drop down to a hundred now. Since we're at K to go, and see we've actually started using air brakes on this brake as well. Um, and we're going down to 100. It's actually this turn we need to be, to be going at 100, but yeah. There's, I say there's a lot of speed posts missing, but the speed limit just drops to 100 in this area. When you're driving with the hood on. So I'm just, you know, taking it at the fact that you have to be at 100. You can see this. I think this route probably is 160 in reality, but with super elevation. And I think the time this route was made, super elevation didn't exist in Train Simulator. Um, yeah. Be interesting to see if it does in TSW because I can't think of anywhere I've seen it in the game. Super elevation being where basically they cant the rails into the turn, so you end up with a, a rail at like a 10 degree angle, say. Usually much less, actually. What I'll do is I'm going to... So, yeah, officially, we are technically outside of the 100 limit now. 
but just the tightness of these turns, even 100 feels quick. So I'm going to wait and give it a second until we get straightened out. It's a fun fact, I actually derailed the last time I tried to drive this. And hello, Yard 20. And you got an intermodal train. Put it on its way from one of the inland ports. Or to one of the inland ports. So we're going to drop it to 160 in about 2... Or sort of correction, 120 in about 2k. You can see a nice little riverboat. Is that Proud Mary? This is the riverboat queen. The whales keep on turning. No. It's the... Dresden. I assume from the naming, probably quite a famous ship in the area. Um, I'll put 120 in the in the box now, I think. I'm feeling it. Yep, 120. So we're now approaching uh, Bad Shandow. The milepost for Bad Shandow, for interest, is 23.2. You can see that's a closed crossover. Um. Oh, hello, 442. New. I felt the need to serenade them, I just did. Um, that's 26, so yeah, I've got a while yet. Yeah, we're now in the 120 section again. I'll do it, yeah, I will break it, basically, we passed 23.2 at about 50, so, you know, it's n we don't have to break that soon to get slowed down in time. I do have a vegetation upgrade for this route, I believe, but you can see the trees are still 2D, which is quite frustrating, but um, that's probably what the red outlines are down there, some texturing issue with that. 24.2, um, yeah, it's 1k to go, so I'll put a 50 in the window. You can see Bad Shandow Station in front of us there, so we'll start the slowdown. My word, this thing... I, you know what, if, if everything broke or slowed down as quickly as this does, I'd be, I'd be, yeah, I'd be very happy with the game. It would be nice, actually, to get the Vectron in TSW. Like, there's, um, a, one of the Twitter furries, uh, bought the Railway Dog, um is a massive Vectron fan. And honestly, I'm starting to go that way because it is such a nice look at drive, and at least in TSW. I suppose he's been petitioning uh, the guy, K Trains, who made the 386 to make this as well. You know, which would be a lot... Because this is quite an old model now. You know, it would be nice to uh, get an updated version. You can see a Regio Swinger in the platform there. Again, this scenario, by the way, is built around completely fictional workings. Well, what we're driving is true, but um, everything is sort of fictional but plausible. And sort of substituting units, you know, if I don't have them. Basically, I made my own scenario for this. I, you know, threw it together in a couple of hours. You can see, at slower speeds, that the... the um, Dynamic brake is not doing anywhere near as much as it did at higher speeds. So I'll just do that and then put a bit of proper brake on. Welcome to Bad Shando. So what we're going to do, unfortunately, um, again, the doors don't work on this platform, but. We'll just give it a minute. We'll give basically just stand here a minute and pretend we've just been given the. <laughs> but interestingly, clock works here, doesn't work there, and doesn't work there, and they're all different. Th those two are in different times. 
redevs. Um, what I'll do before we move away is I'll start to speed out here as 120, so I'll put that in the window. Let the break off. Acknowledge the whistle. And we'll sally forth bravely. And 120 is now the highest speed we'll achieve for the rest of the run. Our next um, point of interest will be passing Shona Station, or Shona. So S C H O N A. So I'm Shona. I don't know. I'm going to say Shona because that's, that's probably the, the most accurate pronunciation I can manage. And that's in 8.6 kilometres. And that's not a stop for us, as I mentioned earlier. Um, our next stop is Gechin, which is over the border in the Czech Republic. Uh, pre Schengen zone, you'd actually have uh, you know a passport control walking around looking at passports on on board the train right now. But um, yeah. We'll work the train forward now. So yes, um, yeah. As I say, I really enjoy the veteran, and like I'm hoping to, to actually probably travel this route in re in, re in the real world. Um, one of my plans for the future is when I can tra when we can travel again legally, is um, go over and see my mum, and so that side of the family in Ostrava which is in the east of the Czech Republic, which is where they're from and where they live, and um, do it all by train, which I just feel like would be a really cool journey. Unfortunately, I say we, we don't get beyond 120 on this on this leg. Don't know why, but we don't. It's also, one thing I've noticed with Germany is these freight yards, that seem to be just in the middle of nowhere. So I never know what to put in them, so I've just left this one empty like it's disused. So it gave me a disused vibe. But the uh, yeah, the thing with, with freight in Germany is it is on the continent, really. Compared to the UK, it is massive. Um, yeah, the... Uh, you know, in the UK, I'd say maybe 20%, not even that, of trains are freight. Maybe 10%. Whereas over here, it's sort of 30 or 40. It's, it's a massive difference. Um, you know, for example, I live on the in the northeast, obviously next to one of the main arterial routes in the UK, between England and Scotland, the East Coast Main Line. We get three, maybe four scheduled passenger runs that actually go north of here. Any, sorry, sorry, correction, freight runs that go sorry, so, so, yeah, so significantly north of here, which just shows... Also, oh yeah, also you can hear. I'll just lean back there, and you had a little bit of a creak from my, my chair. But like, you know, compared to so we left my old chair. Um, I got a new chair. So the old one, the weld that held the the plate, basically, there's the hydraulic thing that makes the chair go up and down, and then there's like a flat plate that then screws onto the the base of the chair. The weld that held that flat plate to the hydraulic thing had snapped. Um. So it's there's there's vertical stability there, but laterally, like I was getting sort of twenty degrees left and right bank. It was great in flight sim. It was like it was like VR. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, we are going to be drawing towards the end of today's video very rapidly. So uh, whilst we're here, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment any suggestions for other route learning videos you'd like to see me do in the future. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be posting videos. At the moment, I'm planning a weekly basis, but that that's probably to change in the future. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Okay, I think I called that a little bit too soon, but we'll be here till Shauna, which is, I believe, the next one after this. No, this is Shauna here. Nope, next one. See, I, I, I double tapped it, I did that, and it just wasn't happy. And look at that, another CD vector coming out of the way with a passenger train.
Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.